Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. This week, we are celebrating the beginning of spring, or the vernal equinox, and kind of leading up into Mother's Day. And the book that I've chosen is one book, but five versions. So yesterday, we did the one by Jane Cabrera, and we did a painting short strokes and I painted a rabbit I don't know what everyone else painted but I hung it behind me so that if you wanted to look at that you can see it as we go through the studio but today I chose the book by Ezra Jack Keats and when we get into that you'll see his artwork and you'll think wait a minute he did the one about goggles he's the one who did the snowy day now, Ezra Jack Keats is a very important artist to me because I love his work and I love that what he did for children. But let's start our morning off with a hello song about when it's called When Cows Get Up in the Morning. But yesterday we talked about a rooster. Today we're singing about the hen, the female version. The rooster is the boy and the hen is the girl. And we sing, when hens get up in the morning, they always say good day. When hens get up in the morning, they always say good day. Clock, clock, clock. This is what they say. Quack, quack, quack. This is what they say. All righty, so Ezra Jack Keats. Our book over in the meadow we found out yesterday was written by Olive A. Wadsworth. And it, her name is really Catherine Floyd Dana, but we found out yesterday when she was living in the 18, well, she wrote the book in 1822 as a poem. And then someone put a song to it, and then it became a children's book and a song book. And she wrote under the name Olive A. Wadsworth because women were not writers in those days. And she made the O, the A, and the W stand for only a woman. So other people would kind of laugh about it because really we know that women can be anything. So we're going to look at Ezra Jack Keats. Here he is in his art studio with his hand up to his face, kind of thinking about his art. And here is the version of the book I'm reading today. I bought this from a book club that comes to the school and you can get this book. And there is an, a musician named Marvin Oh, golly, now I've just... Oh, Marvin Hayes, and he does it as jazz. And every time he adds a new animal, he gets a, another instrument brought in and brought in and brought in. So if you can find that, it's out of print, but you can get it from your teacher's stash of books, I'm sure. But this version of Over in the Meadow has is using acrylics. And when Ezra Jack Keats started out, he did have cut and paste things like our friend Henri Matisse. But today we're going to be doing a crayon resist when we get to the Firefly, which is number 10. So let's get on ready for the book and take a look at it because we're going to be talking about a firefly. Now here is the firefly with its tail lit up. Let me show you the back of this. I showed it as the insect when it was not flying. In the other one, when they get their tail all lit up, it has when they lift up their wings. Although when they in their, they're in their larva stage, when they're like a caterpillar and they go underground, it lights up the ground. And if they're under the water, it lights up the water. Interesting facts about um, fireflies. I wanted to get some of them because some of the fireflies, when they get together, they synchronize their flashing. That means if this one's flashing, flash, 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 the others will join in. And it's like a huge orchestra of fireflies flashing their lights. The other thing, they communicate with others. They let so, an, another firefly know that they want to mate so that they can have babies. And then that goes in the metamorphosis where they are like a caterpillar and then they turn into a larva and then they turn into this um, 
firefly with a shiny tail. A lot of people will trap these in a jar just so they can see them lit up. You have to be careful when you trap um, bugs. And we're going to be starting with Fresno Unified in the TK and, and Pre-K of studying insects. And we have to remember, we have to be humanistic about it and not kill the bugs. And we put them in a jar. If you do, you need to release them at the end of the day, unless they have a really nice habitat. Like, I know worms are not insects, but people do it as a bug, and they can make a worm habitat by using soil and putting a little cornmeal on top. I know snails are not called insects, because insects have three body parts and six legs. And we know a spider isn't an insect, but your teacher might study spiders as part of the bug unit because it's so fun to do all kinds of bugs that are not necessarily known as insects. So let's take a look at our book by Ezra Jack Keats. And this one, I'm going to sing it in the melody that Marvin Hayes played and sang it. And here is our version for today over in the meadow. Now, it's illustrated by Jack, Ezra Jack Keats, but he went on the poem that our Olive A. Wadsworth wrote. And here it starts out, you can see that it looks as if he's done some sponge printing on the sky. And in the background, they've printed bark on the trees over in the meadow illustrated by Jack Keats. Now we know a meadow is an open ground that has grass, hardly any trees, little small bushes, and lots of growth that are low to the ground. It's easy to walk across a meadow if it's not all watery. I know there's a beautiful meadow in Yosemite that I like to ride my bike. It has a wooden sidewalk that goes through it. All right, and here it is. We know that one on our last book was also a turtle and it rhymes with sun. So here's a song. Over in the meadow, in the sand, in the sun lived an old mother turtle and her little turtle one. Dig, said the mother, I dig, said the one. So he dug all day in the sand, in the sun. And usually in my classroom, as I turn the page, we do this little rhythm where you say, boom, boom, diddy bada wadum shoo. A boom, boom, diddy bought a wad on the shoe. Oh, and this one's too blue. Over in the meadow where the stream runs blue lived an old mother fish and her little fishes too. Swim, said the mother, we swim, said the two. So they swam and they leaped where the stream runs blue. Oh, there's a dragonfly there. And you can see how he did all different kinds of purple on that dragonfly. Number three, rhymes with tree. Over in the meadow in a hole in a tree lived a mother bluebird and her little birdies three. Sing, said the mother, we sing, said the three. So they sang and were glad in the hole in the tree. A boom, boom, did he bought a water shoe. A boom, boom, did he bought. This one, in one of the books, they tell the beavers to beave, and I'm not sure what beave means, but in this one, they're having the little um, animals dive into the water. Oh, that's because these are muskrats, that's why. They wouldn't call the muskrats to beave. Over in the meadow, in the reeds on the shore, lived a mother muskrat and her little ratties four. Dive, said the mother, we dive, said the four. So they dived and they burrowed in the reeds on the shore. A boom, boom, diddy bada wadum shoo. Oh, here is the bee. Hive, beehive, five. Over in the meadow in a snug beehive lived a mother honeybee and her little honeys five. Buzz, said the mother, we buzz, said the five. So they buzzed and they hummed near the snug beehive. A boom, boom, diddy bought a wadum shoe. This is in a nest built of sticks and it is a black mother crow. Over in the meadow in a nest built of sticks lived a black mother crow and her little crows six. Caw, said the mother, we caw, said the six. So they cawed and they called in their nest built of sticks. 
A boom, boom, diddy, but a water shoe. A boom, boom. Over in the meadow where the grass is so even lived a gay mother cricket and her little cricket seven. Chirp, said the mother, we chirp said the seven so they chirped cheery notes in the grass soft and even they didn't do an exact rhyme boys and girls they the letters are the same but the sound is not so you have to be careful when you're rhyming the letters don't have to be exact but the sound does oh here's that mossy gate again from yesterday and it's a lizard again over in the meadow by the old mossy gate lived a brown mother lizard and her little, little lizards eight. Bask, said the mother, we bask, said the eight. So they basked in the sun by the old mossy gate. Eight, gate, they both say eight. Boom, boom, diddy, bada, wada, shoot. Oh, frogs again. Over in the meadow where the clear pools shine lived a green mother frog and her little froggies nine. Croak, said the mother, we croak, said the nine. So they croaked and they jumped where the clear pools shine. A boom, boom, diddy, bada, wadum, shoo. And here they are. Our picture of the day this is what i'm choosing if you saw something in the story ahead of this that you like better than doing the firefly then choose that but i wanted to do the firefly because i love to use my gold paint over in the meadow in a soft shady glen lived a mother firefly and her little flies ten shine said the mother we shine said the ten so they shone like the stars in the soft shady glen and there they are now when we make these i'm going to make a shape of the head the thorax the abdomen and it has four wings two long ones at the top two shorter ones at the bottom so here's the head with the two eyes, the thorax where the six legs come out, the abdomen, and the four wings. They call it two sets of wings. So let's find out how we're going to do that. I'm going to close up Ezra Jack Keats. I'm going to get myself my table. I have my paper ready to go. I made it this big. I'm making it kind of large. And I'm going to press hard with my crayons. In the book, oh, and I also on my chart have um, the other creatures that if you decide you'd like to use those. But I'm going to do the firefly, and I hope you want to, too. Let me fold this back. It's really not a good idea to fold your book cover back. I'm just going to put it next to the chair so I can see this as I draw it. I'm going to use dark green to outline, and I'm going to do my creature pretty big in the middle of my paper. I'm going to leave room for the antenna, and I'm going to start out. Now, he started out with a little bump, and then it goes down to the head. It kind of looks like a bell, if you look at it that way, or kind of a, a gumdrop or one of those um, kisses that you get that are made out of chocolate. Now... I'm going to put, here's the, the head is at the end with the antenna. Here's the thorax. Now I'm going to make the abdomen, which they had go out and then go down, out as a curve line and go down and make it go like that. I'm going to do the stripes across. That's what they put on the part that is luminescent. Now, out of the thorax goes the big wing and the big wing. And then the little wing has a curve under, and it just bumps into the other one, a curve under. Mine goes off the page, which is just fine for me. And then they have little shorter, like this. I'm going to use my two kinds of green. Now to do this, boys and girls, you're going to have to press hard because I'm gonna paint over it with black paint when I'm finished coloring it. And I'm going to do some lime green, 
pressing super hard. Look, and I have these great big crayons that we used to give to our kinders. I still have these from when I was in the classroom back in the 90s. I'm going to color around here, and color around here. I'm going to color this one in totally green. I'm going to show you what it looks like so far. If when I paint, I don't paint color my tail in golden, when I go to paint my gold paint, it will not show. So I have to be really careful about what I do because when I put the wax on, it makes the paint not stick. I'm going to do some of it kind of that way so I can put some dark green in there too and shade it. I'm going to shade near the edge with little hatches and shade near the edge with little hatches where they come up against the other one because that makes it look like it has form. Remember, one of the elements of art is doing it in form. So if you go near the edge a little bit and color in, it will make it look kind of rounder or just look like it's more realistic. We're going to do bees. Well, I'm going to do two bees. One day it's going to be bees like in a cartoon, and one day I'm going to do a bee as much like a scientist would because our girl that does our book tomorrow, all of her artwork looks very realistic, or and realistic means lifelike and like a scientist would really draw. Now I'm going to put these on here and get in some shaded edges. Are you doing, it kind of looks a little bit like I'm scribbling, but what I'm doing is just shading over this. So when I go to paint, it will make a night sky and it will also still let my firefly shine. There. Now what I'm going to do is color with my yellow down here so that when I go to paint it, there will not be green there and it won't be the black paint either. Now I'm not going to make it so that my um, sky needs any color in there unless I want to put, maybe I'll put some little purple in the background because he has some dots of other colors. So I'll put, oh, this is a blue but in a purple shade. It does say blue. Oh, it looks like my purple is missing. We used to put numbers on our crayons so that if someone found your crayon, you wouldn't worry where it was because someone would say, hey, Julia, I found your purple. You have your number 13 on it because she was 13 in the list because the letter M comes about in the middle of the alphabet and that's number 13 because the alphabet has 26 letters. So I wrote the children's name down in alphabetical order and the J names are oftentimes in the middle because it's the, near the middle of the alphabet. But then there was Josh and Jacob and their names were in the middle too so you just would fan out that way. I better put some more green on the middle of the body, on the abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Your teacher knows that song. We taught them in our insect class. So if your teacher wants to sing about the three body parts, remind them. And if not, I have the song printed up and I can send it to them through the mail if they write to me. Claudia Reed write at Fresno Unified, and I can send it to them. But it tells head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen. So you can just remember the body parts. Now, I think this looks pretty good. I probably should have put a little baby in the background, too, and maybe if there's time, I could. But I'm going to start my wash. And what I've done is I took some black paint and I put it in a jar and I put water in there and I shook it up. I have to tell you about the black paint that they sell. The black paint is made up of a lot of different colors. White is the absence of color. That means no color is in the white. White isn't considered a color. It means no color. And black is all colors mixed together. Well, when I made this, I saw there was a lot of blue on the jar and some green. So I don't know if it's going to be black, but when I wash it, because now that they're making washable paints so people don't damage their clothing, our um, colors are not as pure as the old days. I'm jingling, boys and girls, because I'm getting my paintbrush out of the water. 
Now I'm going to put my little paper towel down here so that I can get the water out of my brush. Oh, it still has green from when I painted um, the meadow yesterday when I was making my rabbit. Let's open this up. Now, since I shook it, the lid will probably have a little paint inside. It does. So I have to be careful when I'm putting it over across this. Um, oh, it's blue, boys and girls. That is weird. I got it out of the black container, but when I mixed it up with water, look how it turned blue. I hope it's a different enough to go over my firefly. And you see, let me put the paint over here for a second. You see when I paint over any waxy place, you can still see my firefly because the wax makes the paint go away because wax repels that. Oh, I don't want to put this across the chair, so I have to bring it back down here. I'm so afraid of just tipping it over, boys and girls. I hope you're being careful at your house or in your classroom. Because I know a lot of the classrooms have carpet everywhere and it's hard to do art in a certain place unless you put plastic under the table or you are really careful with newsprint and put it old newspapers underneath. I don't want to paint over and over again. I left a pretty much paint on there so it was kind of, I'm going to turn it over and just rub it on here, get off some of it. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Oh, it looks like batik. There's an art technique where you paint with wax or you can color with crayons on fabric and then you crumple it up. It seems so weird to crumple up your art, but then wherever you crack the color, a crayon or wax, and you paint over it, it makes it a crackly art piece and it's so beautiful. I really think that's just so pretty. Okay, I'm so glad I put some of those colors in the sky because I think this color would have been a little blah, but I can see now, not blah. All right, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna put the paint over here because I want to get my golden one. I'm gonna pat out some of this paint. Oh, this makes it nice because this paper towel has some texture on it and it's making it kind of have a little polka dot on the background. Oh, that wasn't intentional, but that is, a good idea. When I say intentional, it means it wasn't what I meant it to do, but it sure made it look even better. Oh, I like that, boys and girls. So if you want to dry your paint painting by tapping it with a clean paper towel, do that. Oh, I think I like my art. Let me show you what I have so far. Let me pat this a little bit more and show you before I paint the tail. Here it is. Here is my firefly in the night sky, and it has it flying with its wings open, but its tail is not um, bright yet because I haven't put the gold paint. So let me set it down and get my gold paint. Remember I told you about this paint? I got it at um, one of those big stores where you can go shopping, and I think it was $1.95, and we used it for clamped. You have to shake it, and look how I do it. I always put my hand over the end of the lid, and I just hit it on my palm, because if you shake it like this, sometimes the lid will come off and the paint will go everywhere, and that is never good. Now I'm gonna lift open this. Ooh, it still looks good. Okay, I'm gonna get one of my little brushes, and I'll squeeze a little out right on there. You could put it on, oh, one of your um, paper plates or something, and then, oh, it does make it bright. And I also brought my glitter, my gold glitter, too. I might put it on there, too. Let me show you what it looks like before you get too excited about it. I think once it dries, it's going to be even more golden. Shiny, shiny. Okay, let me get this. This I got at that store where you can get everything for a dollar, and it's glitter glue. And it came with blue, green, gold, and silver. May I tell you while I'm getting this all mixed up what we're going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, we're going to draw that realistic bee. So I'm going to bring colored pencils, a cream piece, cream colored piece of paper. I'm bringing colored pencils and a shiny, um, a skinny black pen, because I'm gonna outline it and then color it in its colors. Oh, it's getting golder now that, wait, this lid open. Okay, squeeze out. Oh, that's gonna be good. 
All right, boys and girls, let me do this so you can see. And make sure as soon as you finish painting that you put it in the water to get it um, to dry all the paint out of it. Okay. So tomorrow is Marissa Napoletano, and she does the realistic animals, and we'll take a look at it, and we'll do a be realistic tomorrow, and then the following day we'll do a cartoon bee. But tomorrow bring all kinds of things to do your drawing of a bee that is really lifelike. And it also has head, thorax, abdomen, and two sets of wings. Boys and girls, thank you for joining me today for learning about fireflies and about Ezra Jack Keats, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, boys and girls, bye-bye.